Hello, welcome to this weather topic video here. This is this weather topic video going over NWS advisories, watches, warnings, and emergencies is a combination of two previous weather topics that I have done before. They are in two separate videos. I am going to be combining them two. Not every single uh, watch advisory warning and emergency is going to be covered here. Just the the, the more important ones, I'd say. Uh, I'm going to be bringing, again, those two slides together and just bringing them into how I make these slides today. There, the, Some of them are still going to be text walls, but those will happen over time as I explain each individual one here. But before I ex start explaining them, you know, I have to go over some basic fundamentals. First of all is that, obviously, all of these are going to be used differently. If any of them, again, this is US only, if any advisory, watch, warning, or emergency is issued for your area, please pay attention to them. Watches, advisories, emergencies, warnings, all of them are meant to inform you and make sure that you are safe. They are never meant to scare you or make you panic. Just like how tornado sirens are meant to let you know that there is something that is a civil danger, not just to freak you out. Final time, this is going to be covering only the National Weather Service US-based alert system for weather. And we are going to be covering five different types, so to say, of weather alerts. We are first going to be starting off with wind chill. This is at the NWS office or WFO, WFO standing for Weather Forecasting Office, discretion. This means that it is also heavily based on region. So a Florida wind chill, if there has ever even been one, is going to most likely be much warmer than, say, a wind chill advisory issued for... Chicago, Illinois. So the wind chill advisory is officially pale turquoise in color. The wind chill advisory is simply saying that there is cold weather expected and, and quoting the NWS, seasonably cold wind chill, end quote. Doesn't really matter what kind of wind chill is uh, wind chill alerts is issued for you. You at least just want to make sure that you're checking the forecast, checking what the temperatures are going to be like. Bundle, bundle yourself up. The wind chill watch is officially a dark teal. This is where you definitely want to start being prepared and definitely checking your forecast. This is also around the time that you do want to be limiting time outside, both for yourself and for your pets. You, lastly here is your wind chill warning. These are purple. There is dangerous cold expected. Frostbite can occur to exposed extremities such as toes and fingers in minutes, depending on how cold that wind chill is. For your preparedness and safety, we want to always be dressing appropriately with the wind chill and for winter weather. You want to be checking your forecast, stay inside unless absolutely necessary, especially if it's a wind chill warning. Limit yourself outside, like I just mentioned, again, to your, both yourself and your pets. Speaking of the winter weather, that one is next here. Your winter weather advisory is officially light lavender. There is a light wintry precipitation expected, whether this be snow, slate, grapple, or ice. Your winter weather watch is officially a light blue. There is snow, sleet, grapple, ice expected, and to quote the NWS again, confidence is medium. Your winter weather warning is going to be a pink in color, officially. There is high confidence of heavy wintry precipitation. This wintry precipitation is likely going to be bad enough that it is going to be impacting travel. We, are, we now have three separate miscellaneous winter weather warnings. 
This is first up is the blizzard warning. Sorry there. The blizzard warning is officially in orange red. These are not issued very often as blizzards are not too common, thankfully. Blizzard warnings do have strict criteria. Their criteria are sustained winds at or above 35 miles per hour, heavy snowfall, that rate I would assume being around half an inch to an inch per hour, and visibility equal to or less than a fourth of a mile. The ice storm warning is a pretty rare one, and this is a dark purple in color officially. This is the ice storm warning is expecting a fourth of an inch to half an inch of ice within, I would say, 24 hours. These, again, are pretty rare. I cannot remember the last time that I've ever seen one issued. Last up here for your miscellaneous is the snow squall warning. This is violet red in color. Just like rain squalls, snow squalls are intense but short-lived, and these snow squall warnings actually have the same criteria as blizzard warnings. We're now going to do a 180 um, temperature-wise and look at heat weather alerts. These are extremely heavily based on region and are at the WFO discretion. So an Alaskan heat watch is going to be much warmer than obviously a heat watch, or I should say much colder than a heat watch issued for Phoenix, Arizona. Jumping right in, our heat advisory is going to just straight up be orange. These are issued around 12 hours or so beforehand. And the general criteria here are heat indexes, or heat indexes, depending on how you want to pronounce that, of 100 degrees or more Fahrenheit for 48 hours, as well as night temperatures usually not going below 75 degrees Fahrenheit. <clears throat> Your heat watch is officially a dark red. Timing is still uncertain with a heat watch. And there is simply a possibility of heat anywhere from 24 to 72 hours out. Heat watches are usually the first thing issued and then they are then replaced with heat advisories or heat warnings. Heat warnings are hot pink. Just like the heat advisory, these are issued around 12 hours beforehand. And these simply have higher criteria than the heat advisory. The heat warnings, uh, general criteria are heat indexes of 105 or above Fahrenheit for, for 48 hours and again those night temperatures generally not dipping below 75 Fahrenheit. Heat is the worst for the electrical grid and I bring this I bring this up because well if it's going to be hot people are going to be staying indoors and hydrated. People staying indoors are going to be running their air con their AC, their air conditioning, those all mean the same thing. That's going to put stress on the electric grid for the region. And conductors have the tendency to lose efficiency as they get warmer. Power lines happen to be exposed to that heat unless they are underground. But even then, underground, they can still get pretty hot. So you can see how this causes problems and why... Uh, the electric grid sometimes fails when there is some immense heat wave out, let's just say, in the southwest of the United States. We're now going to look at the tropics and look at tropical storm or tropical system alerts. These are what I am going to call sequential. So there is the tropical storm watch, tropical storm warning, as well as a hurricane watch and hurricane warning. The first one that will be issued, generally, is the Tropical Storm Watch. This will then be replaced by a Tropical Storm Warning, and then will might be replaced with a Hurricane Watch, and then that Hurricane Watch might be replaced with a Hurricane Warning. So sequential, in a way. So like one right after the other. 
<clears throat> pardon me, sorry. So first up we have here is our Tropical Storm Watch. This is officially a light yellow. Tropical Storm Watches are, are intended to alert you that there are going to be sustained winds of 39 to 73 miles per hour within 48 hours. The Tropical Storm Warning is a dark yellow and is warning you of the same sustained winds, but instead happening expected to happen within 36 hours. The Hurricane Watch and Hurricane Warning are magenta and crimson, respectively. They are to warn, both of them are to warn for winds greater or equal to 74 miles per hour within the same time frames as the watch and warning, respectively. So the Hurricane Watch winds at or above 74 miles per hour within 48 hours, Hurricane Warning winds at or above 74 miles per hour within 36 hours. And we do have one last one here. This is the extreme wind warning. The, the extreme wind warning is both silver and dark orange officially. I have seen both. These warnings are issued for the eye wall or the core of a tropical storm only. Well, in this case, it's going to be hurricane. These are to warn you that there are going to be category three winds within two hours. Lastly, for your preparedness and safety, if you're being told to evacuate, please do so. Board up your homes, windows, sandbag, wherever you need to, and take what you need. You know, food, water, flashlights, batteries, radio, everything that you need. And I cannot believe that I feel like I need to say this, but take your pets as well. Your pets do care about you. They do act, they do like you. And personally, you should, you should care about them. Do not strand your pets. That's bad. Don't do that. That's bad. Next up is going, we are going to be talking about the severe thunderstorm alert, weather alerts. This is probably what everyone is wanting to get to. And so I've saved the best two for last. The severe storm, wa severe thunderstorm watch officially is a light pink. This is almost always seen though, even on the weather channel. And actually I shouldn't say my radar because my radar f changed it to the official color recently. Uh, but again, these are normally seen as yellow. Even by uh, the uh, NWS Severe T-Storm uh, Twitter bot that issues the watches on Twitter, shows them, the, even they uh, do not use the lights pink. <clears throat> they, use, they use yellow. <laughs> but these uh, generally are issued around four to eight hours in advance. And so they are forecasted to last. So a severe thunderstorm watch usually lasts for that four to eight hours. A, weather, a severe storm watch is simply saying that the ingredients are there for storms to form. You do not need to take immediate action. You are fine for now. <clears throat> severe thunderstorm watches cover a quite large area and follow county boundaries, county lines. There is also the Particularly Dangerous Situation, PDS, Severe T-Storm Watch. These are also officially a light pink. These are pretty rare, but simply signal that there are riper conditions available. These again are also issued around 40, 4 to 8 hours in advance and follow county lines. Biggest thing with these, with the watches, is that they are choreographed between multiple WFOs because these usually incorporate such a large region. For example, if there is to be one issued for most of Northern Illinois, you would be um, choreographing that with three uh, National Weather Service offices, Chicago, Quad Cities or Davenport's NWS, and lastly, Lincoln NWS. That goes to show just how large of an area they can have. Moving on to the severe thunderstorm warning. Officially, these are yellow. 
so that they may be seen as red though on stuff like the Weather Channel or uh, my radar sometimes. I, I believe the Weather Channel does actually use yellow, yellow though to distinguish them from tornado warnings. Good. Again though, the severe weather warning is issued as a storm is happening. These also follow storm movement and do not need to follow county boundaries. Severe thunderstorm warnings have a criteria of 1 inch hail or greater, 75 mile per hour winds, or a tornado. If a tornado is seen before a or before a severe weather warning has been issued for that storm, then both the tornado warning, obviously, and severe weather warning will be issued. A tornado is plenty detailed enough to know that, well, a storm is powerful enough to already produce a tornado, so it must have some pretty intense hail already because it needs a big updraft with very high winds for that to even happen generally. And well, a tornado usually has winds greater than 70 miles per hour, but also that storm is going to be intense enough to produce 70 mile per hour straight lane winds probably as well. Moving on from that, a, a severe storm warnings usually last no longer than an hour. We are talking 30 to 45 minutes. There is also the PDS Severe T-Storm Warning. These are also officially yellow. The PDS warning is simply, simply just has higher criteria. So we are talking about stuff like one and a half inch or two inch hail, and it's, let's say 80 mile per hour winds. If you follow the uh, Severe T-Storm Warn bot, then uh, it will give you a like, like an object size uh, to compare it to. Uh, the, the most infamous recent example that I know of is a DVD size hail, which, um, wow, that is insane. Uh, lastly, about T-Storm uh, PDS warnings is that they are also known as destructive T-Storm warnings. Lastly here, we have our tornado alerts. Your, first of all, starting with our tornado watch, obviously. These are officially more of a pale yellow. Even the NWS tornado Twitter bots uses red for these, though. Just like the severe T-storm watch, these are issued around 4 to 8 hours beforehand. The tornado watch, just like the severe T-storm watch, is saying that the ingredients are there for tornadoes to form. These, these cover, sorry, I should say cover, not follow a large area. They cover a large area and also follow county lines. Tornado watches do generally not cover as large an area as severe T-storm watches. The PDS tornado watch is also a pale yellow. These are relatively rare and just like the PDS severe T-storm watch, is signaling that there are riper conditions available. Usually for PDS tornado watches, this is some wording that generally is as or saying that there are multiple EF2 plus tornadoes possible. The tornado warning is red. There are a few versions of tornado warnings. There is a radar confirmed, meaning that the radar is seeing a hook echo, which is almost always indicative that there is a tornado, not necessarily on the ground, but maybe forming or definitely possible for sure. Or spotter confirmed, meaning that a person has reported seeing a tornado on the ground. The tornado warning does not have to follow county lines, just like the severe T-storm warning. And again, just like the severe T-storm warning, these do not last any longer than an hour. Again, generally, you are looking on the shorter side of things from 30 to 45 minutes. Our second to last is the PDS tornado warning. This, this warning is also red. The PDS tornado warning 
is letting you know that there is a known tornado on the ground that is a threat to life and property. And just like the regular tornado warning, you should be taking action, getting to the lowest level of your home, such as a basement, and if you do not have a basement, the most interior room that you have. Take everyone with you, shelter, cover yourself up like with a pillow, blanket, whatever. Protect that head of yours. Our last alert here is a tornado emergency. The emergency is also also red. A side note here is that uh, my local news actually has it so that the that the PDS tornado watch and the tornado emergency will actually be purple to make them stand out more. That of course may be different for wherever you are at. But officially the tornado emergency is red. The tornado emergency is used only for a known tornado that is heading towards a populated area, densely populated area. Now there of course have been cases where tornado emergencies have happened with no tornado and that just and there is and there is a series of events that leads to that happening with no tornado. And that while that is unfortunate that it can happen, it still does. The most recent case happened in around June, I believe, in northern Arkansas when somebody actually faked reports of a tornado. So you can see how a tornado emergency is, can happen with no tornado. And that is all of the weather alerts that I will cover with this video. Thank you guys so much for watching until the end. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Love you all. Goodbye.